Livingston returned to Africa again in 1866, aiming to extend the reach of the gospel and abolish the slave trade on the east coast of Africa. He also hoped to find the ultimate source of the Nile River on his journey. He encountered many difficulties again on his trip. Between illness and his followers deserting him, amazingly, he pressed on into Central Africa, going farther west than any European had ever traveled. A 30-year-old journalist named Henry Morton Stanley was preparing to set sail from the port of Bagamayo, the eastern coast of Africa, for the journey of a lifetime. He worked for the New York Herald newspaper and was tasked with a career-defining rescue mission. Find the famous missionary and explorer, Dr. David Livingston. David Livingston was born to a poor family in Blontyre, United Kingdom on March 19th, 1813. As a young man, he joined an independent Christian congregation, which focused on strict discipline, helping him acquire the characteristics of mind and body that would help him in his African exploration. In 1834, when he was 21 years old, an appeal for qualified medical missionaries in China caused him to become a doctor. He studied Greek, theology, and medicine while working part-time in a mill for two years and then was accepted by the London Missionary Society. His dreams of going to China specifically waned, but a Scottish missionary in Southern Africa convinced him to focus his efforts on this unknown part of the world. On November 20th, 1840, he was ordained as a missionary and set sail for South Africa. Livingston became very passionate about his work in Africa and developed quite the reputation as a dedicated Christian, courageous explorer, and fervent anti-slavery advocate. Livingston set his sights on undiscovered countries where the population was more numerous. His goal was to spread the gospel through native agents. By 1842, Livingston had gone farther north than any other European into Kalahari country, familiarizing himself with local languages and cultures. As you can imagine, life in Africa in the 1800s wasn't easy especially for a non-native used to the green hills of northern England. One of his famous stories of courage took place in 1844. Livingston was told of a lion in a village that constantly was dragging off villagers' livestock. So, he decided to do something about it. Livingston tracked the lion to an open field and went in with only a shotgun and no backup. This was a terrible mistake. The two shotgun blasts that ripped through the lion did nothing but make it mad. As he tried to reload, the lion lunged forward and latched onto his arm. Livingston described himself being thrown back and forth as a terrier dog does a rat. The lion tore through his flesh and broke his arm in several places. Its teeth made gashes like gunshot wounds up and down his arm. Livingston survived, but was terribly injured. Livingston would have had no other doctor to help him or any anesthetic, so it's hard to imagine the pain that he would have endured. He even had to set his badly broken arm himself. The injury was so severe that he would never be able to hold a shotgun steadily again. Livingston married Mary Moffat, and she accompanied him on many travels. But soon enough, health and family needs caused her to stay at home. 
With his family safe in Scotland, he was able to focus even further on pushing more north with Christianity, commerce, and civilization. He is known to have said, I shall open up a path into the interior or perish. On November 11th, 1853, Livingston set out northward with very little equipment and a few Native Africans. His goal was to establish a route of commerce to the Atlantic coast. He continued to explore the Zambezi region for many years, discovering and naming Victoria Falls on November 16th, 1855. He returned to England a national hero. His fame and income from writing about his ministry travels brought his family out of poverty. He then began traveling and speaking. But in 1860, he set out for his second expedition to Africa. He was much more prepared when he set out the second time. He had a paddle steamer, supplies, 10 African helpers, and six Europeans. But there were quarrels that broke out when they found it was nearly impossible to navigate the Zambezi by ship. He decided to take his little vessel with a small, untrained crew on a great voyage across the Indian Ocean. The Zambezi Expedition ended up providing a valuable amount of scientific knowledge, and they gained prospective locations for colonization. He also tragically lost his wife, who was with him on his journey. Livingston returned to Africa again in 1866, aiming to extend the reach of the gospel and abolish the slave trade on the east coast of Africa. He also hoped to find the ultimate source of the Nile River on his journey. He encountered many difficulties again on his trip. Between illness and his followers deserting him, amazingly, he pressed on into Central Africa, going farther west than any European had ever traveled. Livingston then returned to Ujiji in present-day Tanzania, where he became very sick. At this point, he had not been heard from in many years. Search parties had even been sent to look for him to no avail. Bringing us back to Henry Stanley's rescue mission. It was a miserable journey making it through swamps, battling malaria, and that was all before narrowly escaping being massacred during a local civil war they encountered. Six months of trekking through Africa, and Stanley was down to 34 men. That was after getting replacements for those who had died or deserted the expedition. But he had taken an oath. He was determined to fulfill his promise to find Livingston, dead or alive. His commitment gave him the strength to persevere during those awful times. Stanley clung to order and inner self-discipline during his trying journey through Africa. A unique habit helped Stanley maintain hope. Stanley determined that he would always shave, maintaining an orderly appearance, even in the grimiest of circumstances. Stanley's rescue mission came to an end with his now famous quote, Dr. Livingston, I presume? Stanley finding Livingston was paramount for Livingston's recovery. Stanley had brought much needed food and medicine, which allowed Livingston to regain his strength. He was even able to join Stanley on his own explorations. Livingston did not want to leave Africa though, despite Stanley's pleas. So Stanley returned to England alone in 1872.
Livingston, soon after, succumbed to his illness and was found dead, kneeling beside his bed in prayer. But after 30 years of travel and Christian missionary work in southern, central, and eastern Africa, where no European had previously traveled, Livingston influenced Western attitudes towards Africa more than anyone had before him. His geographic, technical, medical, and social discoveries jump-started many new thoughts and ideas that are still being explored today. Livingston's life mission was to open a missionary road, or a God's highway, 1,500 miles north into the interior to bring Christianity and civilization to unreached peoples. He also brought to light the horrors of the slave trade. After Livingston's death, Stanley decided to return to Africa and pick up where Livingston had left off. He visited the King of Buganda, which led to an influx in Christian missionaries in the area and in 1877 established a British protectorate in Uganda. Stanley also began development of the Congo region by building a road from the lower Congo to what was called Stanley Pool and was able to launch steamboats on the upper river. This is when he earned his nickname Bula Matari, breaker of rocks. This was not an easy mission, in fact, it took a lot of sheer willpower and perseverance. They endured hunger, malaria, dysentery, and festering sores. If that wasn't enough, then they were attacked by natives with poisoned spears and arrows. Not as many made it through that mission as had started. He referred to the area as Darkest Africa, understandably. Stanley's work helped pave the way for the creation of the Congo Free State under the sovereignty of King Leopold of Belgium. His last expedition to Africa was a relief mission of Mohamed Amin Pesa, governor of the Equatorial Province of Egypt. In the process of this mission, geographic points regarding the sources of the Nile were cleared up for the explorers for the first time. Stanley's reputation grew into the Michael Jordan of explorers, and his friend Dr. Livingston's legacy paled in comparison. Stanley learned Swahili and developed lifelong friendships with his African companions. He disciplined white officers who mistreated Africans and kept his men from violence against the locals. At a young age, Stanley had lost his faith in God when he witnessed the horrors of the American Civil War. But in Africa, he found his calling. When he saw firsthand the devastation of the Arab and East African slave trade, he made it his mission to put an end to it all. He believed it to be a sacred task. Stanley wrote, I was not sent into the world to be happy. I was sent for a special work. Thanks to Stanley and his rescue mission, David Livingston was able to continue his exploration and mission work. Today, Livingston and Stanley are regarded around the world as two of history's greatest explorers. Both of them drawn to exploration in order to advance science, abolish the slave trade, and take the gospel to the ends of the earth. <laughs>